I'm Kath James, Artistic Director at Southeast Dance. I'm wearing a dark brown polo neck jumper. I've got blondie brown hair and I'm wearing my glasses on my head. Um, so I thought I'd just give you a bit of um, an overview, really, because Lou is going to give you the detail uh, around of the, the different spaces within the dance space itself. But this project has been over 13 years just on the Circus Street site. And before that, many, many years of trying to find a, a professional space for dance in Brighton. As you will know, there is very, very few professional dance spaces in Brighton for rehearsals and production time. And it's a much, much needed and necessary um, cultural space. And it's finally coming to fruition this year. So that's been a long haul to get there. Um, I think, so a vision, our vision for the dance space and that vision being, you know, an organization's guiding star on the horizon where you want to get to um, is very much about transformation and not just the transformation of that physical space in Circus Street, but for you, the artists who we hope will inhabit the building, for the public who we want to engage with and welcome into the dance space, and also for the staff team who are going to be there hands on delivering and welcoming and, and running the activity that will make the dance space hopefully that go to destination for dance in Brighton and the wider Sussex and Southeast region. So we're hoping that the, the dance space will be that fertile creative hub where international in, internationalism intersects with localism through exchange and residency programs, a real meeting point for our artists and our communities and our public, a safe space to celebrate the joy of dance, the rigor of a movement practice to share ideas, ambitions and challenges. So the dance space will sit on the edge of the UK, looking out across the channel to Europe and beyond, a real leaping off point for artists and that first point of welcome for global artists, communication and exchange. So we're hoping to keep our borders porous, um, regardless of the challenges we now face outside of the EU. Um, so welcoming great work from beyond geopolitical boundaries and providing as much support as possible to send our UK artists global. Um, so the dance space will have a rich, hopefully a rich and diverse cultural program. Um, and we believe a level playing field in terms of equality of opportunity for all is the way to creativity. So diversity for us is the engine of creativity. And in order to achieve true change, diversity will be the lens that we look through, through which all programming choices will be made from the artists we work with through to the audiences we want to see in the building. So artists are at the heart of the vision for the dance space. And this is the place where artists can meet our community. So we want to really um, make that crossover easy so artists get to know their audiences and our community and the community get to understand what the artists are thinking, how they work and why their work is relevant to them. Our public is intrinsic to the vision for the dance space and to, to the success of the dance space. So we want the we want what happens in the building to come from our community and to that effect we've been working for the past three years with a number of local community groups within the area that the dance space sits in so within that sort of Tana Queen's Park area we're working with a, a steering group that for the last three years who've really been feeding into our thinking and shaping what, what the program of activity might look like for our community and so that's where you guys come in we really want to bring you into that conversation around shaping what sort of program you'd like to see within the dance space for artists from you know whether it's experimental labs or studios for time or class program performance program so we're really interested in that dialogue with you to find out what is it that's going to make that building welcoming to you and a place where you want to be of course young people hugely important you know we want to be able to provide um, progression pathways for those who might want to find a career in dance, but also those who just want to dance, you know, who just want to have fun, dance, and become advocates for dance when they get older or become our audiences of the future. So young people very much at the heart of what we're doing. 
Um, I think, you know, we're at the start of the opening of the dark space now. And I think as times change, standards and, and relevance and the way we think about co-creation will all, you know, and technological developments. I mean, who knew 12 months ago that we'd all spend the year on Zoom? So I think we need to be open to change and open to take on new ideas, new ways of thinking. And I'm hoping that that philosophy will be at the heart of what we do. So I hope this, this vision um, speaks to you. I feel it is a, it's a, a bold statement of intent around the way we want to think about how artists work with us and how we work with our communities. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's a bit of an experiment. We're on a learning journey and I hope that you will all be um, as involved, as involved as you want to be really. So that's, that's me. Does anyone have any questions for now or do you want to hold them off for after you've heard a bit more about the structure and what the class program might look like? Great, excellent response, thank you. I'm going to pass over to Lou and Lou can talk a little bit more in detail and she's got images which will be much more interesting. So over to you Lou. Thanks Kath, that's great. Um, well, Eve has done kindly done the images. Eve, are you? Um, so these are very much artist impression images as we are building this space right now. But um, the very exciting news is that that lovely spiral staircase that you can see in the image there is actually been going up this week. So we're very excited about that. Um, so as you can see from this image. Uh, the dance space sits inside a whole new area of, um, of other buildings that have been build, built in this area that it's called Circus Street. There's university buildings, office buildings, there will be cafes and shops as well. So it's very much going to be um, at the heart of a new regeneration area in Brighton and it will have an um, outdoor space as well which you can you can make out from this artist impression um so we'll be able to do outdoor performances there as well we will obviously share that space with the other organizations who are in this area but we will have um access to doing outdoor performances there which will be really exciting and um, so here you can see the building cut in half you can't quite see everything but this will give you a good idea so you can see on the ground floor um, that there are two studios. There's also lots of other things on the ground floor, some changing rooms and toilets, a reception, the entrance foyer. But um, we're focusing on the on, on really on the studio and performance spaces. So if you can you can see at the bottom two studios, and you can see that the studio, as you look at it on the right hand side, actually will have bifold doors that open onto that outdoor performance space so we'll be able to um, do indoor to outdoor performance space there and have those or have those doors open that'd be great you know it's as we know we live in a country where it rains a lot so that's going to be brilliant for meaning that outdoor work won't just have to get rained off um, and the space at the back um, is another studio, uh, a, another rehearsal space, another small creation space for artists. But um, I'm going to talk a bit more about them later when I get to the dimensions of them, just sort of showing you what it looks like at the moment. And, and then the space above that is, is what at the moment we're kind of calling, we were calling it the creative industries floor. That's going to be a floor that will be rented out to um, organizations other arts organizations who will work from the building we're still thinking about what that looks like at the moment and then the space above is the is again another really flexible studio so as you can see in this image it's been set up for performance but it won't be performance all the time it will be a performance um area with retractable seating that comes in and out so it can be really flexible it's got a running wall um but also it will be your it'll be a creation space it'll be a space where artists can come and use it to do production week to test out their lighting and their sound because we know that's something that's missing um and you can see on the right hand side of that that 
there's uh, the spaces and the, the top space will be part of the Southeast Dance Office with a window that overlooks the space. But you can't, like I said, from this cutout, you can't see everything. So that's a little snapshot. So the Aldridge community spaces is a, a kind of bigger um, idea of that. So as we were looking at the last one, this is a, the space that was on the right hand side with the bifold doors that will open onto the outdoor space. This will mainly be used for classes, like Kath was saying, all sorts of classes, community classes, um, people be able to hire it to hold their own classes. We'll have a programme in there. Can we go to the next one, please? And the research space, which is the one when Angie looked at it on the left hand side, where we're hoping that we will mainly be able to support artists who are going to make their work in the space. But again, might be used for private hires or classes as well really flexible at this point uh, and that's the creation space that I was talking about so does have that retractable seating but also can fully come out so you can see that um, you can see the seating there uh, the plan is at the moment that these the seats will all be different colors and mixed up as you can see them now um, that's really really good for people who have a visual impairment and uh, also we did a scheme where you could um, and you still can buy your own seat in the dance space that's exciting I've got a seat there I'm looking forward to that and the next one uh, so then there's other meeting rooms as well um, which again Eve's going to talk a bit more about later so this is one of the bigger ones just a rough idea of this the boardroom um, and there'll be other smaller spaces. You can hire spaces out for one-to-one -one meetings or slightly larger spaces. And we'll also be using those these rooms for our own meetings. Uh, okay, so here we, we've got um, a breakdown in the size of the spaces so you get a better idea. So the Oldridge Community Studio is the one with bifold doors that opens out. And so got the dimensions there. Uh, and obviously everything's got a high spec uh, sprung dance floor um, and with Harlequin overlay and got mirrors and sound system we're also looking at which will come into a bit later but um, getting like live streaming equipment and all sorts of different things in all of these spaces and the space the sizes for the research studio in there and the creation space studio all of these, apart from the Oldridge Community Studio, which is definitely called Oldridge Community Studio, still working progress with the names. Uh, so we can share these slides with you as well. So don't worry about writing everything down if you're thinking about the future and that you've come because you want to book spaces, we can share all that with you afterwards. Nice little artist impression of what the, uh, the area is gonna look like hopefully nice and bustling and busy. So if you don't know Brighton at all, the area that's gonna be in is where the A27 cuts down the middle of the city. And so if you were going towards the sea, you could then see the pier. If, the pier. if you're looking at the pier, we will be on the left-hand side of the pier, but about three blocks back from the seafront. So that's, we're right in the center, right in the heart of the city. Kath did explain it earlier in that, the area that we're in. But if you don't know Brighton, that's roughly where we are. So also learning that would probably be useful to share a map in these things if people don't know, people don't know the city. Um, I don't know if anyone's got any questions at this point. I'm sure you'll have loads afterwards because that's when we want you to also talk about what, what you'd like to see in the space. But if anyone does have a question at this point, no, great. Okay, then I'm going to hand over to Eve, who's going to talk a little bit about what you can hire. Hello, everyone. I'm Eve, and I'm the studio and program manager at Southeast Dance. It's lovely to meet you all. Um, I think quite a lot has actually already been covered by Kath and Lou, but I'll just go into a little bit more detail about the studios and hires and our class program. So as Kath said, um, of course we want the space to be really diverse. So we're hoping to have a really diverse range of classes. Hopefully there'll be something for everyone. So that'll be all ages and all abilities. Um, so we're really keen to not replicate activity that's already happening 
in Brighton and Hove. We want there to be a different offer. And um, yes, yeah, so it will really hopefully be this diverse, amazing programme of classes, which will include um, our own programme as well as hires. Um, so the studios are all available to hire for regular classes as well as one-off workshops or of course performances or sharings. Um, we have got a sliding scale of rates to do so because we want to make sure that you know these the, the studios are as accessible and affordable to as many different people as possible including of course independent artists. So one of the rates is an independent artist rate to make sure that you know there is available space at a cheaper and affordable rate for you to come whether that's to rehearse or for some research and development there will also be a last minute space offer um so yeah if there's spaces in the program and um that with some of the studios haven't been hired out you'll be able to also um there'll be affordable space through that way as well um in terms of other spaces in the building, of course, we have the meeting rooms, which will be available to hire, whether you want to have um, more formal or also informal meetings. And we've also got a variety of artists, what we're calling artist pods. And these are really flexible spaces that, um, you know, you can have, they're very small, so you can have, you know, one-on-one -on -one meetings or, um, but they also are artist accommodation. So if you were coming and you weren't open to Brighton and you were putting on a performance or coming for a residency, um, they are also available to hire so that you can have, and the idea is that hopefully you'd be able to have 24 seven access um, to a dance space if you were in those spaces. Um, I think that's everything for the moment from me. Um, Again, if there's any questions, I'm sure I've missed out things, but they'll come up in the questions and we can go into further detail. Um, yeah, Lil Cap, is there anything extra at this point for us to? I might just add in that at this stage, we've got three partnership organisations with us to deliver their programmes in the dance space. So for older adults, we're working with Three Score Dance Company who will have their main company classes and rehearsals in the dance space. We're also working with Parable Dance, which is an inclusive uh, dance company that is going to be delivering our inclusive classes in the building. And then we're also working with Flexer and Sanderland, who are working with over 50s ex-professional dance groups. So we are already in partnership with those three organisations to support the programs that already exist in Brighton. But because the dance space is going to be so accessible, one of the most accessible dance spaces in the UK, if not Europe, um, we feel it's really important that we support those organizations that are targeting specific groups who are currently struggling in you know, church halls and places that are just not suitable um, to give their participants the best experience. So, they're the three, they're currently the three partners we're working with in the city. Do you want to add anything to that, Lou? No, yeah, just, um, yeah, as Kath said, the building is is really, is going to be as accessible as we can possibly make it. Um, and that's, um, that's something we're continuing to work on. And that's all sorts of access, not just, um, not just disabled access. Does anybody have anything they'd like to ask or say or share? Donald. I always have things I want to ask. I never ending font of curiosity. I'm when when does the building when is it due to be finished? When is it projected to be opened and being used? Why don't we bring Rachel into this conversation? Rachel's our executive director and is leading on the dance space. I'm going to just hand over to Rachel. Hi everyone, it's lovely to be here. Uh, yeah, it, it's a very good question. And it's one that we have struggled to answer for the last two or three years for a variety of reasons. Um, uh, I mean, capital projects tend to be prone to delay. And then obviously um, in the last year with lockdown, there were huge problems with labor on site and um, that caused a further delay. But 
since Christmas, there's been a lot of work going on on site. I mean, um, Lou mentioned earlier that the, the spiral staircase up the side of the building is now being installed. And as things stand at the moment, providing we don't enter a worse COVID situation, we're looking at receiving the building from the developer in um, late June. Um, and then we will be commencing our, we, we receive a fairly complete building. I mean, it'll, it, it, you know, the toilets are in, the kitchens are in, the walls are decorated, um, you know, blinds, lighting are all there. But what, what, it, what, what it won't be when we take it on is a, a, a usable, equipped dance space. So we have a responsibility as our part of the deal to uh, bring in the retractable seating and the technical equipment for the creation space and kit out the studios and furnish the, you know, the common areas of the building and the offices, which we are anticipating doing through the autumn. We are looking at having a soft opening for a testing period in the first three months of 2022 which gives us a chance to you know start to bring people into the building but you know we're very aware we've never run you know a sizable dance space before and there'll be a lot to learn so we're having three months where we're predominantly testing but activity will be going on as Cal said we'll be working with our partner organizations to test the space over that period and then we're hoping to do a proper full public launch in um, April of 2022. I have another question just to, to um, clarify something that you said, Eve, about those, those, those small little pod places. Did you say something about they can also be used for accommodation or residency or did I miss, mishear that? No, that is correct. Um, they will be flexible spaces, but the idea is that artists will be able to stay. They are very small, so um, it will only be able to accommodate one or two people at a time um, and also to say it we cannot um, officially advertise it as accommodation so it's it can only be used in terms of when you're coming for an artist residency or part of a performance or part of other activity that's taking place at the dance space um, so it's really an additional offer to artists um, who want to come and use the dance space um, and especially you know, considering Brighton's a very expensive place um, and expensive for accommodation. So hopefully it will enable more artists to be able to come and create work, deliver work and explore work um, within the Southeast region and at the dance space. And just, uh, and there are three of those. Yes, sorry. <laughs> clarify. That's fine. Um, thanks Eve. Um, Vicky, you had your hand up. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you talk about inclusivity as much as possible. And I'm now with a new mum hat on. <laughs> I'm wondering how accessible the spaces are for families or for artists coming that have children or artists that need that additional support with um, young members of families, if, if that's been thought of. Um, we, thank you, Vicky. Very good question. Um, yes, I have we have spoken a little bit about artists in residence who have children and that the green, the one of the larger artist pods that sits right next to the entrance to the creation space on the same floor could well um, be set up as a creche space for someone to, you know, to bring in someone to mind children, if that's the case. Um, we would be very well, you know, we very much want to welcome everyone, as you say, and we would work with artists to find solutions. But, you know, we're a baby friendly company, totally. Yes. Um, Florence, you have a question. Do you want to read it out? Do you want to unmute yourself? Sorry, you can't hear me. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, yes. Okay, great. I, I was just wondering, um, have you considered starting to offer uh, on uh, a free opening and ahead of, as a way of making an easy... Florence, we can't hear you. Can you type it in the oh. chat? If you can hear me, could um. you type your question in the chat and we'll read it out for you. Uh, 
Um, hopefully Florence heard me and we'll get that question. Um, Vicky, I know you've turned your camera off. I just wanted to also just come back to Vicky's point about um, families. Um, it is very much something we're thinking about. So Vicky, if you can still hear me, if not, I'll drop you an email. It would be good to um, know about as a as a dancer and as a choreographer um your experience of going to places now you're back working being a new mum and things that you have um discovered that have been barriers um, so anything that we can learn from would be really useful thanks vicky um florence i don't know if you did hear me but we didn't hear your question yeah, sorry, and I got completely disconnected. So whatever I typed didn't get through. Apologies. No, that's fine. We can actually hear, if you maybe try again, if we don't awesome. hear you. <laughs> I'll give it a go. So I was wondering if you've considered offering um, classes or workshops on Zoom or equivalent uh, ahead of opening officially or, or ahead of anything being physically possible as a way of raising awareness and, and starting a, an income stream. Uh, yes, we are actually already uh, doing that. So um, we have done lots of different ways of testing um, Zoom. Um, Sarah, who works with us, who's not on the screen, has done lots and lots of looking into it. So we actually are already running a boys movement class. Um, we have been running professional classes as part of Mind the Gap as well, inviting um, um, guest professional artists in to do that and um, as Kath said the three companies that we're working in partnership with three score parable and flexor and sandyland flexor and sandyland have been holding their um, intergenerational um, classes and classes for older dancers um, online via zoom and we've been supporting them with that so yes we we are already doing that we are already thinking about that and we are thinking going into the future how we can have a mixed model so we have you know like lots of other organizations have realized that you know uh, during um having to work online we've we are getting artists from all over the country joining us for things and obviously we don't want to lose those artists and we want to be able to continue our, with our offer reaching as many artists and other communities as possible so um we are currently looking into um, purchasing uh, very good live streaming equipment. And then that is also a learning curve as well as something we've learned is there is live streaming equipment and there is live streaming equipment. So um, that is, some, yeah, that is definitely something that we're going to continue. Fantastic news, cool. Uh, Clea. Hello. Firstly, can I just say that this sounds so exciting, um, can't wait for it to open. Um, will you be offering professional dance classes? And if so, how regularly? And also, do you um, envision um, that there'll be job opportunities for young professionals when it opens up? Um, yes, yeah, thank you. Um, Eve, do you want to talk a bit about professional class first and then we'll come on to the job opportunities? So um, there absolutely will be professional classes at the dance space. Um, we're actually, that's something, you know, that we currently want to hear from people about how often they would want to attend regular, like professional dance classes and what time most suit, uh, obviously dancers who'd want to come. Um, and we're planning to send out at some point in the future, um, a survey on that, because obviously we want to make sure that it, suits as many people as possible um but yeah there absolutely will be but as with everything with the timetable it's all currently in process um and draft form we're still in the research phase at the moment um so yeah if you've got any ideas on you know best times or how many classes you might want to come to let us know so it's really useful to know um because we can then begin to start looking at that and factoring that into our timetable um, and in terms of job opportunities, and Rachel and Kath might want to feed into this as well, but um, so we currently have, um, well, we're waiting for it to go live at the job centre, but we currently have um, opportunities for young, uh, for um, 
up to the age of 24. Uh, we are looking for dancers uh, at the moment who are um, on universal credit because it's part of the DWP, Department of Work and Pensions funding. Um, and so we've got some of that funding. It's called Kickstart funding. Um, and you might have heard if you I know you've been to other Mind the Gap sessions, you might have heard Pip and I mention it before. And um, that should be going live any day soon. So I don't know if you are on Universal Credit Clear, but if that is something you're interested in, then um, if you get in touch with Pip, she'll be able to give you more information on that. Uh, and yes, we will be expanding our team as well when we move into the space over the next sort of three years. So there will be those job opportunities. Um, there may well be um, sort of casual job opportunities for working in the space as well. We don't know what that looks like yet, but you know, we might need, we might need um, dancers to help us on days when we've got performances and things like that. Um, to work as sort of stewards in the building um, and there will be uh, sort of call outs various call outs and commissions for work there's a call out at the moment I don't know if you've seen it but there's a call out for our city dancers we're looking for work right now um, and there will be con you know we will continue to do more of those when we're in the dance space because we'll obviously have more opportunity um, so there will be various various opportunities and opportunities um, to support artists through supporting kind by giving them uh, create, you know, space to time to use the creation space, um, support, technical support, all of that kind of thing, which, um, and, and staying, you know, you can art being able to give those accommodation pods as supporting kind to artists as well. So there'll be lots of different models. Um, Rachel or Kath, I don't know if you want to, um, add anything that I might have missed um there will be also there'll be teaching opportunities I mean we're not we're not a dance company as such we're a dance development organization so we're very much around supporting the sector and um helping artists supporting artists to fulfill their ambition and their potential so we're not really a dance company as such um, but we did feel it was our responsibility to go for the Department of Work and Pension Kickstart program because we're in a position to support a small cohort of dance artists under the leadership of a, one of our local professional dance artists, um, Charlotte Spencer. So, yeah, there will be opportunities, but, I'm, but it, we're not a dance company, just, just to be really clear on that. Um, I was going to say something else and now it's gone completely out of my head, so never mind. It'll come back to me. Um, Victoria. Hello, I've been following this for years. So um, I've, I've just, I think for the last, I can't remember, five or six years, been following the dance space and eagerly um, because Brighton and Hove doesn't have enough facilities for dance um, in general. I'm always on the lookout for another small performance space and for studio space. Um, and I'm very interested in starting classes for older learners. I have started a class and it's in a studio at the moment. I would love it to have a, a bigger space and a bigger audience. Um, and this is from comes from the Royal Academy of Dance Silver Swan scheme for over 55s, um, which is, is proving pop, popular throughout the country. Um, and I'm, I'm interested generally, I mean, I, I, my background is ballet and I, uh, my take on it is that a diverse, you talk about diversity and that representat representation of people from different cultures. For, for me, diversity also includes different dance forms and I never hear much about ballet and it doesn't get much of a looking whether it's at the festival or etc. But the dance in this country has been hugely um, in its formative years from the 1920s and 30s on, ballet was at the forefront of that of that movement and had, was incredibly creative. I mean, it, it spawned a whole movement that went around the world and a lot of the, the, the ballet directors that went to other places actually came through the, the school in London. Um, and and it's, it's still there, it's still there. So there are a lot of small productions that might really suit the dance space and the things that are happening at the Claw Studio in London, at Lindbury, there are small dance, um, fledgling dancer, student dance companies 
that would look for a space. They never come to Brighton and they don't come to Brighton because we don't really have suitable suitable facilities and the dance space would give it that. So I'm really interested in that. Will your studios therefore, will are any of the studios have uh, a wall bar fitted? So I'll come in on this just um, to start with and then even Lou do pick up. Um, thank you, Victoria. Yes, diversity in all its forms, absolutely. Um, we do plan to have adult ballet classes. We're also in conversation with a boys ballet school that are looking for space in Brighton. Um, and I think we have spoken to someone previously, I'm not sure whether it was you, Victoria, about Silver Swans. I think it um, was, because I came to the meeting in right. Kings Gardens on the 15th of February, a couple of years ago, spoke to you, yes. yeah. Yes, that's right. So yes, it, we're not excluding ballet, but what I would say is that um, for young people in Brighton, ballet is very well catered for in private ballet schools and we do not want to yes. go up. We, we do not want to be competition no i don't i don't i agree i i'm only looking for a one maybe one adult ballet class i have a, a sort of an intermediate advanced group of adult ballet and silver swans because i know your space is, is fairly is limited to three studios and you don't want anybody blocking it and coming in with there are lots of ballet classes for children and i don't think i agree I, I'm, I'm sure that's not what you want the dance space used for but but for those odd occasions where you might have a visiting company with or for, for bar core fitness classes that have become quite popular, um, a wall bar would be useful and the silver silver swans need need it. We do quite a lot of bar work, about 50% of the class is bar work. Right, so yes, um, I would absolutely welcome small ballet companies to come and hire the space. Absolutely, no problem. We will have portable bars. Um, okay with enough space for 30 dancers to be on those bars. I agree. There are two studios with mirrors and curtains that will then cover up the mirrors so that if contemporary classes don't oh, yeah. want the mirrors, we can cover them up. Yes. So we have thought as diverse as possible. You know, we are talking to tap companies, salsa, we're talking to boring people. So we are mm. thinking of diversity of genre as well, Victoria. So ballet is in oh, the mix. Um, great. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything you want to add, Eve, about, about um, the diversity of the classes programme, that we, the, the range of people we're talking to? No, I think you've covered most of it, to be honest. Just that, it, yeah, as Kat said, it, of course, includes genre um, and yeah, completely reflects back that we back into the fact that we want to have um, yeah, a diverse range of classes for all people, but also of lots of different genres. Um, and yeah, yeah, so I think yeah, thank you. I would most of that. Um, I'd also, also just add in that, um, also the performance space is very much for hire. So, you know, if a ballet school or ballet group wanted to do a performance, that will be available for hire as well. And we will also be um, a Brighton fringe venue. So, you know, if companies were doing stuff at the fringe, they could they could hire the studio space to perform in as well. So there will also be different options like that. Yeah, did you want to come back in, Victoria? Yeah, just it, if you've got a number for the, um, the seating plan, how many seats does it encompass in the, crea the creation space? Yeah, Eve, do you want to answer that? Okay. Yes, I'm just looking up the most recent number um shall i answer it yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not a huge seating unit it seats 123 okay um it, it, i mean it, it, it's it's a creation space that's intended to be used to, to be equipped for performances but it's not a you know six nights nice mm. yeah, um so yeah but, but say back maximum maximum capacity on the retractable seating is 123 right okay thank you and just picking up on that, um, we're definitely not, we're not going to be a, a regular performance venue. It's a creation space. It's a rehearsal space. It's a working space. 
but we will be obviously engaging with the various range of festivals and sorts of events that happen in Brighton. So we'll be engaging with the Fringe and the festival. We have our City Dancers Festival, where we'll be involved in International Women's Day events, um, Brighton Digital Festival. So there will be key events that will sort of be the, the pillars of our programme, if you like. But yeah, there won't be Thursday, Friday, Saturday performances every week in the dance space, not at all. Eve. I just wanted to come in and add as well, um, probably goes without saying, but just to be clear, um, of course, the 123 is without any COVID restrictions. And that's the same with our um, studios. You know, before COVID, we had said that it was tw about 20 to 25 people dancing within those studios. And we are currently, of course, looking into what measures and precautions might need to be in the space if those measure, like, restrictions are still there when we open, which I imagine they probably will be. Um, I was going to say something else now, I've forgotten, but, oh yes, and that comes back into the dual looking at uh, the streaming of classes and using live streaming equipment as well. Um, but yeah, so some of the uh, class numbers and spaces, it might, depending what the situation is with COVID, that might alter slightly, but we're looking into that at the moment, what that might be and what we might be able to offer. Vicky. Hi, yeah, um, just going back on the point of um, seating arrangements, um, if you were putting on family performances as well, is there, has there been, seating thought about for family audiences at all? I, mean, I think one of the beauties of the retractable system is that it's um, it's retractable. So we we could have performances where we don't use the seating unit, and um, we have a different. We've talked about this again a little bit in relation to um, what Eve was saying about COVID restrictions. But you know, for example, uh, this isn't directly answering your question. It's just an example. You know, we we have got the option to set up you know sort of more of a cabaret style setting with them. Um, in, you know tables and chairs and I think for family audiences there's a, there's every possibility of creating you know much more informal performance space in there with you know floor cushions or or chairs or whatever it might be so certainly I think the fact that it's not a fixed seating unit actually plays into the our ability to be able to be quite flexible about how we arrange audiences in there. Um, and also just adding to that is we are looking at um like breakout space, like quiet space, and we're going to be part of the resting network. So that's also stuff that we're looking into as well, you know, and uh, and all of different aspects of that. So that will also feed into families as well as disabilities. A lovely space to research is the Egg Theatre in Bath, which I'm sure you you know of. Um, but they have a beautiful um, space, a breastfeeding space, and also a space where you can still view the performance but take your crying baby outside at the same time. So it's a lovely space to research. <laughs> yeah, that's great. We we have we will have a window, so um, we're thinking about that as well, whether we can use that, and that's the resting space, and you can look in through the window. Yeah. So, but but very much. Um, all working it out at the moment so yeah if if um after this if anyone does have any great ideas please do share them um it, you know it's something that we we want to really learn from what other people have done and yeah the egg is a great space in bath they're, they're um hopefully gonna w with our little big dance project they're hopefully taking those shows and talking to them about that so um yes it's really it's really good to hear about the great things that other venues have have done and we're also looking into relaxed performances as well aren't we Lou I mean I know and you've probably all know that the Bastia Arts Centre has recently taken the approach that every single performance they put on will be a relaxed performance uh, and so all of the artists um, have agreed in principle to do that so that's something that we're considering at the moment I've be very interested to see how the first season of Bastia Arts Centre goes with that I think launching in April uh, April May this year isn't it so I'd be interested to see how that goes and um, they've also um I'm just going completely off topic here so sorry um they've also taken the approach that every performance they're going to do is pay what you decide so that's another interesting thing in terms of breaking down barriers for people to come and take part in classes and performances, but yeah, something that's on our radar anyway. 
And and we did do um it, it's quite a while it's quite a while ago now and we could probably do it again. We did do a survey that we sent out to lots of disabled artists and um, disability led organisations asking them and, and the communities they work with, you know, what were the barriers and, and lots about lots of people came back and said, you know, knowing that once I'm in a show, I can't leave and come back in and things like that. So we're trying to incorporate all of those thoughts as well. So um, and please continue to share all those ideas with us. Anybody else got any questions? Lucy. Hi, um, in London, I know there's quite a lot of things called contact jams, where it's kind of like musicians and dancers come together um, and just improvise and dance. I didn't know whether um, the dance space would offer just sort of a time or session allocated for artists to come together and just improvise and create and just dance, not necessarily for anything serious, but maybe to network and um, meet other people that you might not see in other places yes is the answer yes we are we don't know we're still thinking but yes and we very much want it to be a place for artists to be able to network so we're thinking about because we won't have a coffee shop but we're thinking about doing things like coffee mornings and artist cafes and yeah definitely contact jams and we've been thinking about um their name's gone out of my head now what the company that does the very early morning rave sessions what are they called Kath. morning glories morning glory things like that we're totally thinking about yeah how do what time do people want to get involved at different times of the day and and also that research space is very much a space about um you know you don't have to have an outcome you don't have to think oh gosh i've got to i can only come to the dance space because i'm going to make this work it could be that you want to hire that space for a couple of hours and just dance in it you know and it and like you've said we're very much looking at very different prices and if you as an artist are unfunded and you haven't got any arts council funding you know we there will be a sliding scale so we can talk to you about what you can afford and um and it might be like Eve was saying, it might be that um, we have some kind of register of people where we say, actually, it's free today for an hour who wants it, you know, very last minute kind of thing. So, yes, absolutely. We don't we don't want to, it doesn't have to always be about a product at all. It's very much about supporting artists in lots of different ways with whatever they need. And that might be just meeting other people or networking or just getting together to dance. And Lucy, we're also talking with independent dance in London who are based at Siobhan Davies Studios because we're, back in the day, they had a fantastic international program uh, where they would bring brilliant people over from the States and from South America and from Australia to lead um, some of that, that contact jam sessions on a Monday evening or even the, the class program in the week. So we have been in conversation with them about joining up and um, splitting some of that travel cost and, and getting them down to Brighton whilst they're in the country. So that will ho hopefully we'll be able to continue those discussions once um, once borders open up again. Vicky. Sorry, last question from me. Oh, no, I don't, don't be sorry. <laughs> this is what it's about. Please don't be sorry. <laughs> um, just touching on what you said about the ACE um, project grants um, and if people were successful or not. Um, would you be, um, depending on the conversation with the artist, of course, um, in a position to put that, uh, put the support in kind into a project bid as the artist um, with the studio, for example? So to say to the to Arts Council, we are going here for a week or two weeks and it's going to cost the equivalent of this. Is that something that the, the studio is wanting to do. I only asked because I was at another networking event for the Southwest the other day and it was very interesting to hear thoughts around how the dance model often needs money first. You know, it's the age old conversation of do you need the money before the product's there, but you've got the product and and there was long, lots of conversations around how can we break that model? But that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> But in short, it, is that something that is an is on offer for artists to be able to do if they if they needed to? 
Yes. So we obviously need to make money on the spaces. The bottom line is we have our own bottom line as well, which we will need to make. But yes, absolutely. We are already in conversation with artists for that supporting kind because um, because obviously with COVID and Brexit and um, and the the dance space now being delayed for the was we were initially already we should have been in the space and we were going to do that test period that Rachel spoke about earlier with um with some local artists that we'd already uh, lined up and they had already put that space in kind in their arts council application and it was already to go and then obviously sadly they couldn't have that space um but yes absolutely absolutely yeah there'll be conversations with artists about the accommodation being supporting kind and the spaces and that going into their arts council bid and it might be that we we will only have a certain amount of space and time that we can offer each year and so if we've run out of the free space it might be that we'll be able to offer you some sort of discounted rate and that goes into your arts council bid you know there'll be there'll be if we can always have a conversation with you about what that looks like yeah um, and staff wise would that be yourself that artists would have the conversation with or is it does it depend um it depends actually i mean it totally depends it, it might be eve it might be me it might be kath it might be pip or rose depending on 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 what work the artist wants to do really so mm -hmm. um the best the best way to start that journey is to book an artist advisory you can do that on the website and you put in what it is you want to talk about and that goes to Pip and then Pip looks at um, who in the team your best, um, the, the best fit is for mm -hmm. your project. And then you have an advisory with that, with that team member. And yeah. then we can talk to you about the work and what we can offer. But yeah, you know, we're, even though we haven't got the dance space, we're still offering a lot of supporting kind to artists. You know, we can offer all right. sorts of different things from mentoring support, um to uh um marketing support and all sorts mm -hmm. of things so we well, just these yeah. sessions have been brilliant for me as well <laughs> coming back into it so thank you oh, good. <laughs> that's good that's really nice to hear yeah it's been really really lovely to do these sessions as well it's just been really really nice to continue to connect with artists and um yeah and have conversations so and, and these sessions are carrying on until around about the end of may so the, so yeah please do come some more and and hopefully you know the funding that we've got to do them runs out in may so but then they, we will do them again because mind the gap is this is kind of the second pilot we did a mine we had mind the gap a couple of years ago which was in real life face to face we supported eight artists to do all of this training and a similar journey and then we this time we've done it again all online and then we're going to do it again when we're in the dance space but what that looks like and whether it's that mixed model of a mixture of online and in person um so yeah also this is very much also about what artists want so if if you feel like there was something missing that you really wanted to think about or learn about or talk about then again please let us know because we can we can put that in because this one very much came from conversations with those eight artists who did the original pilot who we thought that they would say oh we wanted more professional dance but actually they didn't they said we wanted more how to apply for work how to do your tax bill how, and we were like oh okay yeah we can do that so this is also all the time in conversation we would love to hear about what sort of sessions artists want and we can hopefully make that happen but again we had to get external funding to do it you know what it's like so it's always funding dependent <laughs> anybody else got a final question or final thought or anything they'd like to share no well it's really really lovely to see you lovely to hear your thoughts and really really great to have these conversations and um, this is always the start so please do get in touch you know get in touch with eve if you want to talk about you want to bring a class and you want to teach a class and you want to hire the space you know eve can have those conversations with you it is still very much up in the air at the moment because like kath and rachel said you know even though we have these dates they might move and but, but we are ho really hoping that that is the last time they'll move 
fingers crossed. Yeah, Eve's put the email address in the chat. Um, please do save the chat, but we will we will also save the chat and send it out. And we'll send out those slides if that's useful. Is that useful or do people would people like us to send those? Yeah, okay, great, we can do that. Um, yeah, like I said, there's always artist advisories. So just go onto the website and book those um, and we can book you in for a session. And that's on anything, it's on artist needs. So whatever you want to come and talk to us about, uh, it's up to you. And there are more Mind the Gap sessions and this is the bit where I fail and I just ask Pip to tell you what's next because I never remember. <laughs> the next one coming up is how to make your work accessible. That's next Tuesday. Oh, yeah at five o'clock that's going to be a really great session yeah. that's that's with um parable dance who kath spoke about earlier um and with um stop gap uh and um laura de howe another independent um disabled dance artist. Uh, so that's going to be a really really great session yeah and then we move into april can't believe it's april already um and we've got another session which is about where to find support from for, for other orga organizations as a dance artist so we've got equity one dance uk and people dancing giving a discussion on, on what the, what services they offer to dance artists that will also be really useful great thank you so you can sign up for all of those on the website um please do come along and share them on your social media you know um they're free sessions also uh, pip do we have more money or we don't have more money no so we were offering, as some of you know, um, money to attend these sessions if you needed the money. And I, I'm afraid that money has all gone now, but that's been great. We've been able to support quite a lot of dancers and just um, keep your eyes out for the for the um, the kickstart program that I mentioned earlier. It really should be going live any day soon. So um, you have to get in touch. You have to apply through your job coach. But if you are interested, please do email Pip and she will be able to send you the information. And if you can't, if you're struggling to get the information or you can't get hold of the job coach or anything like that, do let us know you're interested because because um, Rachel is talking to the to the um gateway who we have to do it through so we will then be able to say to you okay it is live now they will definitely know about it so so do get in touch with us because we really do want people to apply for that opportunity um, and thank you everybody lovely to see you